Hey everyone, it's been a very long time since I wrote, read a bedtime story. The last one I did the Lorax, which was like a few months ago. However, it was still a pretty long time since I did it, so I decided to read How the Grinch Stole Christmas because it's one of my favorite Christmas books of all time. Um, we would read it all the time, a lot. <sighs> so, sit back, relax, cause it's bedtime story. It's, it's basically bedtime story time. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. No, please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may, be, may have been his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's. Staring down from the cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now, hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled, with his Grinch's fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew. All the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's young and old would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast for who pudding and the rare roast beast, which was something the green couldn't stand in the least. And then they did something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas thing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I've been putting up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then, he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. He made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat. Then he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeers are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? Nope. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, 
and took some red thread and tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags, some old empty bags, on a ram's on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. And then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All of the windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. The Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, This is stop number one, said the old Grinchy Claus. And he climbed onto the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a minute or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace, flew, where the who stockings hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums. Checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. Then he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stu stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. And he took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of hoo hash. He stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. Now, said the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. The Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove when he heard a small sound, like a coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who. Little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by his tiny who by this tiny who daughter who went out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But, you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick and he thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home in my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. And he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took 
was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for, for the other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze. Then he packed up his sled, packed up with their presents, the ribbings, the wrappings, the tags, the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the size of Mount Crumpet, he rode it with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's, he he was grinchously laugh humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang up open for a minute or two, and then the who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo-hoo! That's a noise, grinned the Grinch. I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so. But it was merry, very. He stared down Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes, and he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the smalls, were singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could this be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled for three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something. He hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, he thought, means a little bit more. What happened then? Well, in Hoovedale, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through it the bright morning light. He brought back all the toys and the food for the feast. And he... He himself carved the roast beast. This is a famous Christmas book that was written by Dr. Seuss. I don't really own any of these books. I haven't even written a book before. 
Um, well, at least I haven't written a book that was officially published. So, yeah, Dr. Seuss definitely owns all the everything about this book. Yeah, I really like the message behind it, and I hope you guys can understand. But um, for now, if it's bedtime, go to sleep. And if it's Christmas Eve, well, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.